is uh, the Committee for Research, Treatment, and Cures. Uh, <clears throat> you may have seen some of the commercials and mailings uh, come to your mailbox or on your TV. The idea is to take Jackson County and elevate it to national status with respect to med medical cures. So taking the core research that, you know, Stars Institute's invested in, and UMKC and other of our fine institutions have invested in, to leverage that up so that we are translating the research to bedside cures. Cures for children, cures for seniors, cures for critical illnesses. Uh, if you look at, in our community, you go right over here to 64132, uh, one of the highest per capita diabetes rates in the nation. Not in the state, but in the nation. And we all know someone, a neighbor, an in-law, a cousin, a direct family member that may have had a critical disease or a chronic illness. The idea would be that if we invest through a half-cent sales tax in Jackson County over the next 20 years, we can invest $800 million in UMKC, Children's Mercy, and St. Luke's Hospital with world-class caliber researchers. The goal, at the end of the day, is healthy people and a healthy community. Now, as with any new technology, think about it. Five years ago, ten years ago, did we have cell phones in our pockets and our purses? Did we have, you know, all sorts of new technologies in our vehicles? No. The lightning speed which medical advancement occurs is fast, but the only way it is fast is through investment. Now. I will tell you flat out, as Representative Lefever said, a sales tax is a regressive mechanism to fund any investment, flat out. Unfortunately, we are very limited on taxing mechanisms that we can spread and share the burden across multiple levels. At least with a sales tax, you're getting folks from Leewood, Liberty, Leavenworth, Warrensburg coming in to help invest in our community. Um, the goal, again, at the end of the day, is healthy people and a healthy community. We strongly believe that this will set Jackson County at the next level across the country so that we will be the ones that can benefit. Not only can we benefit directly from these health initiatives and this research that is translated into bedside cures, but also benefit long term for our children and our children's children. That's kind of the quick snapshot. The flyer uh, hits a couple of the high points. I know you have a full agenda, uh, so I'll stop here. Happy to try to answer any questions. Any questions I can't answer, there's a wealth of information on our website. Yes, ma'am. The monies are going to be coming from sales tax, not real estate taxes? Sales tax, half cent sales tax. Okay, half cent sales tax. Fully audible, independent board that uh, completely uh, deals with the oversight of the revenue, uh, not in politicians' hands. Yes, sir. Who, who appoints the board? Uh, the board is a combination of the county executive and the Jackson County Legislature that would uh, appoint respective board members. Michael. Why uh, this sales tax? It's also going to be on food and medicine, too, though, right? Unfortunately, when the sales tax went through the county legislature, they did not afford any exemptions, unlike some of our state sales tax, um, and similar to some of our community improvement sales tax that are across the board. So, uh, in this instance, it applies to everything. 100% of this money is going for research, yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Okay. How, how are we going to be sure about that, though, because funds are fungible. You know, you give the hospital forty million dollars, they can they can have three or four janitors on the payroll that are actually doing multiple services. I mean, I've worked with people that have had grants. I've seen how you can play games with grant money. So, and I I just can't see how a board can micromanage to ensure that. I also can't, don't see how you're going to have the expertise expertise to have the oversight on, on something that you would need someone like the NIH to actually understand 
what they're actually doing rather than some well-meaning good citizens. Two very good points. Firstly, the Independent Autonomous Board will, again, be fully audible and have a, a trail that is transparent. Now, as with anything, okay, your homes association, your business, your neighborhood club, your club at your church or respective uh, temple of worship, you can have bad actors. You can have folks that are over here trying to, you know, move money around. We've got three partner institutions, Children's Mercy Hospital, UMKC, and St. Luke's, that are well-respected institutions in the country, not only within our community, but in our country. They have national reputations. The last thing that these institutions are going to want to do is play monkey games with the money. Now, can I stand here today and tell you with a thousand percent certainty that no funds will go for something they're not supposed to go to? No, that would be lying to you. But what I can tell you is that every precaution, every safeguard has been forwardly thought through to be put in place in advance. Second, your point about NIH is, is an outstanding uh, example. With the Stars Institute and the research that they're doing and the other research in our community, there's an opportunity to leverage those funds and bring those funds here to our community with the establishment of this institute. Some of you may have seen that the Hall Family Foundation pledged that if this initiative is successful in an open ballot, they're willing to invest $75 million in private funds for a brick and mortar building to essentially house and establish this institute. Now that's, that's separate from the tax. That's leveraging private dollars. That's just one example of what we can do if this tax is successful and put uh, to use here in our community. Yes, ma'am, in the back. Sir, I, can I, just, I just want to make a point because I think you're using a lot of superlatives, a thousand percent, a hundred percent goes to research. And if we actually look at the documents that are put out there in the memorandum of understanding, which is in, a, in and of itself very, very vague, we, we would see that that's actually not true. In the, mem in the memorandum of understanding itself, it states that about a million dollars per year is going to an oversight committee. You also addressed um, someone's question here, which is a very good question about the board that's going to be involved. And that was really problematic because the answer you gave suggested that it's all going to be lo local um, officials. But that's not true. The board is going to be composed of members, or CEOs of local corporations with one person appointed by the Jackson County Legislature, right? Is that the real answer? And I, I just no, really want you to be open and honest with these I, people and give them the real so answer. So that's not, it's not right. I, I, I just, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. My husband will speak on this too, but I, I'm just disappointed that you're using these superlatives and giving misleading answers to people and no. trying to whitewash what's really going on. Yeah, I'm, I'm, first of all, I've, I've come to this group for decades, and folks around the room know me. And they know if there's one thing that I am is I'm honest. I'm not trying to mislead anybody. And as I said, if there's a question I can't answer, be happy to direct you to our website. Then please but talk about the CEOs who are appointed to the board because I want you to clarify that and, point. Until this initiative is passed, no one is appointed to the board. At the point where it's appointed, it is full public oversight and transparency. Jeremy. Yeah, so, uh, I guess uh, maybe you can answer this, maybe you can't, you know. Uh, how many jobs do you think, or is there estimated that this would actually increase in Jackson County? The, the jobs number initially is very difficult to quantify, and here's why. It, it's, it's like anything that's research or technology based. As it grows, then obviously it will grow jobs. Now, are there going to be some world-class, you know, significant researchers that come to the community if this is successful? Yes. So. Now, does that mean that they have assistants? Does that mean that eventually they have teams? Probably so. But is it fair to stand here today and say, I can tell you it's going to bring 3,313 jobs? Can't, I can't do that right now. Now, what I can tell you is that if this is successful and you're investing a $75 million building, that that's significant construction jobs. You know, there is the potential for this. The, the thing about Research for Cures is this is, it's not a tangible road or bridge. It's not like renovating the stadiums, okay? We are investing, if we choose, okay, if we choose, and here's the bottom line. 
Everybody just needs to go vote on November 5th. You vote yes, great. You vote no, great. The main thing is everybody votes because that's the democratic process. We are investing in an opportunity to grow our community in a growth industry that provides for a long-term vision, a long-term vision, and a long-term benefit for healthy citizens and healthy communities. Jerry, let, let me tell you, if you know, uh, many of you know, I'm a former Hallmark employee, so is Mr. McDonald. But if the halls are willing to put up that much money for something, then you know they have to really believe in you know, in this. So that's that says something, I think, in the community. You know, if, if they're willing to invest seventy-five million dollars. <laughs> Whoa. Well, the Hall Family Foundation, very wealthy, very benevolent, as any other uh, corporate Kansas City citizen said. Is it, have you heard anything else about other corporations putting up matching? Not as of yet, publicly. Has it been sought? I'm sorry? Are they being pursued? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And they, there have been some <coughs> offline discussions with some of the larger foundations. And, you know, in many respects, rightfully so, folks are saying, well, get past November 5th and then come talk to well, us. Well, and, you know, Don yeah. Hall is... So. Fairly influential, and yes, yes. he doesn't sit back after making an announcement like that without True. working the crowd. So. True. So. I thank you all for your time. I'll be happy to stay around and try to answer questions one on one afterwards. Uh, would ask for your consideration, and again, as I've said at multiple neighborhood organizations, multiple Democratic groups, the main thing is that everyone goes and votes on November 5th. Thanks. <laughs>
uh, in constructing this facility. And if you spend any time in the construction industry, I did spend a brief time in that industry, you'll know that $75 million is not that big of a construction project. It's, it's really kind of small pennies when you get down to it. So the whole thing about this creating a ton of jobs in the short term is, is probably a, a lot more appearance than it is reality. When you get down to it, who's actually going to be hired in the long term? It's going to be highly paid researchers who come from other places. And researchers, the way they work is they work in teams of about nine people, it turns out. They bring their team, whether it's from Duke University, from New York University, from Stanford University, from someplace in Boston, MIT or something, they come here. And if they shop and uh, here in Raytown or on the plaza or up at Zona Rosa, that, that's super. But it's not that big of an economic return compared to the amount of money, $800 million, that we're going to be spending. How's it bad for the economy? because they say it's going to be good for the economy. It's bad for working people. Uh, I've got a client right now, she's a single mom of four kids. Um, and she lost her job after she complained of someone inappropriately touching her in the workplace. She's been out of a job for a year now, uh, doesn't have an education, doesn't have skills or training, can't find anything. She can't come to my office to visit me because she can't afford the bus fare. I go and visit her, um, which is something uh, that you know I, I think is very important. But she can't even with her kids afford a bus fare to get out and visit me at my office to talk about her case. How is that single mom in Jackson County, who spends all of her money here in Jackson County, going to be able to afford to pay even twenty or thirty dollars extra over the course of a few months to finance something that she will never be employed at? and will probably never see any return from. The returns, if there are any, are years in the future. But it hurts right now for working families in Jackson County. And that's just not fair. The proponents of this also say that this is going to build a stronger community, and it's going to make Jackson County and Kansas City a national leader in the development of treatments and cures, and local patients are going to benefit. Folks, I certainly hope so. We all hope so. But there just aren't the facts to back it up. When you think about something as huge as medical research, somebody here astutely mentioned the NIH uh, earlier, that's why we have national programs that do research on this kind of stuff. We have national universities, your MITs, your Caltechs, uh, funded by the federal government. We have the NIH. We have the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. This is the nation that put a man on the moon. But it was a nation that put a man on the moon. Jackson County could never have had its own space program. Jackson County doesn't have a tax to fund the military. There are certain things that are so big in scale that it would be foolish to try and do them on just a local level. And high-level medical research is one of those things. If you ask anybody who's serious in the scientific community, we're talking Nobel Prize people here, if you ask those folks, can you finance serious medical research on a half cent sales tax in one county, one place in America? The answer would be no. The folks who are pushing this are well-intentioned people, but they're not folks who have the expertise on what it takes to run national level research. The final thing that we hear from the proponents of this is that it's going to protect our investment. By law, the money raised is going to be governed by an independent board. Now, the fact of the matter is there are a number of boards going on in this tax. The important board is the board that runs the institute. There's an advisory board. There's an oversight board. There's a whole bunch of boards. All of us know, especially being involved in politics, you can find yourself on the advisory board to just about anything. And that's a board that doesn't have much power, does it? What matters is the board that runs the show. And that board is composed of the chief executive officers or their designees of the major institutions that are supporting this. Children's Mercy, St. Luke's, UMKC, the Kansas City Area Life Sciences Institute, an institution very few of us know much about other than um, its leadership is composed of folks who spent a long time in the pharmaceutical industry. 
Um, they make up the board. And then there is one appointee, one appointee from the county legislature and the county executive. Only one person who is even indirectly accountable to the voters of this county. Folks, that's not real accountability. This is taking money from the taxpayers, giving it to a board that is composed almost entirely of private corporations and is going to be administered by that board. That's not adequate oversight. That's not adequate responsibility. At the end of the day, what this is, is it's a giveaway. It's a bailout to a number of large institutions. And the most important thing is where the money is going to go here, protecting your investment. I doubt anybody in here would go to their stockbroker or financial planner, give them $100 and say, why don't you go invest this? I understand there might be a risk. There might not be any return. I might lose my whole investment. Why don't you go invest this, though? And if you make a return, don't pay me back the whole return. Just pay me back 20% of the return, and why don't you keep the 80%? Nobody would ever be get, give their stockbroker an 80% commission, but that's what this tax does. 80% of the net profits stay with this institution. Only 20% go back to the taxpayers. No one would ever gamble money like this. This is not protecting an investment. It's an investment that none of us would ever make, but they're asking the taxpayers to make that investment. This is simply not the right idea and not the right time. It needs to go back to the drawing board. It's a worthy, worthy goal, but it's just not adequately thought out, and there are too many questions. So I'd urge you as a, as a fellow Jackson County resident to vote no and spread the word that this is just not the right idea at this time. Thanks so much, folks.